In the next few videos, I will look at equipping you to be able to build real life applications. For this to happen, we need to look at saving data of our applications somewhere online and centralized. We need apps where several users at once change and see data from the same database, but on different mobile devices. We need a mobile backend as a service. So what is a mobile backend as a service? It's a model for providing web app and mobile app developers with a way to link their applications to backend cloud storage and APIs exposed by backend applications while also providing features such as user management, push notifications and integration with social uh, networking services. Providing a consistent way to manage backend data means that developers do not need to redevelop their own backend for each of the services that their apps need to access, potentially saving both time and money. It specifically addresses the cloud computing needs of web and mobile app developers by providing a unified means of connecting their apps to cloud services. And if you look at backendless.com platform backend as a service, uh, you can see they describe their backend as a service as a highly scalable backend for your mobile and web apps. Backendless mobile backend as a service is a complete backend with support for user authentication, data persistence, file storage, messaging, and custom business logic. Everything you need to build awesome apps without worrying about servers. So if we can say this in, in normal English, if you look at this picture, we've got a space where we've got database and database management, user authentication and management, push notifications, geolocation, file storage, and much, much more in one centralized place. Now, these guys from Black Endless have created this for us automatically. They've already created it. They've built the APIs. They've built the uh, software development kits for every platform. It includes Android, iOS, JavaScript, PHP, .NET, everything built in APIs. And then for all of those, uh, a software development kit. So what we've got here is a place online where we can store our data, but where we can have our PC, our laptop, our tablet, our phone, all connect to the same database, this backend as a service. Okay, so if we can quickly go through the website and just see what is backendless all about, uh, maybe one of the first things we can quickly have a look at is the pricing. So if you go to pricing and backendless cloud, you'll get to this page. If you scroll down a bit, you'll see there's the four pricing plans. So we start off with a free and then you can go to developer cloud nine, cloud 99. So in the free plan, you can see that you've got 60 API calls per minute. You've got uh, data tables, five data tables, which is a bit limited data objects in a table and a thousand geo points, geo fences, file storage of one gig, uh, notifications of 50,000 messages per month and so forth. So that's the free plan. If you upgrade to the $8 per month, then you get a lot of other limitations there, but it's a bit more than the free plan. So you can basically start off your application on the free plan. And as you get your user base a, a, lit, a little bit bigger, you can upgrade to any one of these other plans. And then if you go down, you can also see that you can increase your plan limits. So increasing plan limits only starts with the $8 per month option there. So you can see that you can add another additional 600 API calls per minute for $100 per month, additional 100,000 push notifications for $10 a month, extra 50 tables for $25 per month, and so forth. So you can also add more as, you, as your need uh, develops into something but more. Uh, but the, the free plan for now will suffice if you start testing your app and your app is not that big for now. You can start 100% with the free app. It's, it's enough uh, for you to get going and get your application up and running. So this is the pricing part. Uh, one thing about Back Endless, and this is why I've, I've chosen Back Endless, is their support. They've got really, really good support. So you can go to the support forum or to the Slack channel. This is a Slack channel is very busy at this stage. They they answer questions quite fast. And then there's a support forum where you can ask a specific question and people will get back to you normally within 24 hours. So there's support options. You can look at those if, if you've got questions on the APIs or development kits or whatever. You can ask them the questions there and they'll They'll most probably answer your question in uh, 24 hours.
If you look at documentation, and this is probably one place where you stand still a lot, is the API documentation there. So if you click on that, you'll see that these are the SDKs now, the software development kits for Android, Java, for SDK, for iOS, for JavaScript, for .NET, for PHP, the REST API, custom business logic, and so forth. So there's a few SDKs and their documentation that you can go and have a look at. So because this is an, this is Android videos, I'm going to look at the SDK for Android or Java, and I'm going to look at version 4, which is the newest version. So I'm going to go to API documentation there. And uh, I'm not going to go through the documentation here because I'm going to do videos on this documentation. So if you go to the documentation, you'll basically see everything. I'm not going to handle everything in the videos. But you'll see there's a lot of APIs uh, or, or a lot of stuff built into this uh, software development kit. So for instance, if you go to the user service API, you can see there you can go and learn how to register a new user, how to log in a user how to get the current user that's that's logged in now, how to log out a user, how to reset the password of the user, and so forth. In the data service, again, you can go and learn about data objects, how to save data ob objects, how to update them, how to delete them, how to retrieve them, uh, how to get objects count, and so forth. Advanced object retrieval, um, sorting, paging, dates in search, and so forth. So there's a lot of documentation, even messaging. If you go to messaging, how to send push notifications. Uh, in files, how to, to retrieve a file, how to save a file, how to get your file count. So there's a lot of documentation here uh, in the Android SDK that you can go through to make sure that you understand your coding. So I'm going to do some of these in videos to just uh, explain their services. Uh, mostly on the user service and the data, data service as well as messaging. So we're going to have a look at, at, at those three mostly. Uh, but if you want to do more, remember that this documentation is on their website and you can use it. You can also see there at the top, we welcome your feedback on the doc documentation. Android 4.0 is, um, is, is the newest version now. Uh, sorry, not Android 4, back endless 4.0. And if you find error or typos or whatever, you can you can go to that Slack channel and just help them out a bit. But that's basically it for the documentation. So obviously the first thing you need to do in this on this web page is to actually go and register. So if you click on register there, they ask you for your first name, your last name, your email address and your password. And then you must just indicate that you're not a robot and then you can register. I'm not going to register again because I already have uh, two accounts here. But uh, if you register, it will take you to a page that tells you you need to go and check your mail and then confirm on a link that you actually own that email address. So after confirming that link, you can log into Backendless, entering your details, email and password and clicking on login. And that will take you to, to, the, to basically a page where they ask you to enter the name of your first app. And then after entering the name of your first app, you'll get to the console. Okay, so after logging in and creating your first uh, application, you'll get to a screen that looks like this. So I've just created the new one called Test, and you can see uh, a lot of information there on the dashboard. I've got the app name, I've got the developer there, I can delete my app here. Uh, this ap application key we've got, or application ID key, we've got the Android API key because we're gonna use uh, Android. We need the Android application or application interface, program interface key. We need this key, you can copy the key there. You can also regenerate the key if you think that somebody else, like you guys now watching the video, uh, if I want to regenerate my key, I can just click there and say yes, and it will generate another code so you don't have access to this specific application of mine. So there's the application ID that we'll need later on, and we'll also need the Android API key. So really easy to copy it and go and paste in your coding. Okay, but we'll get to that part later on. Also, you have a list of all your apps here, and you can create a new app if, if you want to. You can also create an app by just clicking there. Uh, if you want to go back to your dashboard at any time, you can just click that Home button there. It will take you back to this page. At the top, you can see there's your SDK downloads, there's documentations, there's support. So everything really easy to get to. On the left-hand side, 
Well, before we go there, you can see that you've got your limits also posted here, and you can see where you are at this stage. Uh, you could also have a nice graph to see in which days did the API calls get a bit high or whatever. So let's go to the Manage tab quickly. In the Manage tab, you'll see you get your, your API keys again. You've got some social settings there. We've got mobile settings. We've got email settings that you can set if you want to send out emails. Domain control, custom domain, Git, Git support. There's development team and so forth. You can also delete your app here. There's analytics, there's log management, there's billing, there's export if you want to download a copy of your application data and settings. There's also an import if you want, if you've exported it and you want to import it again, you can do so. Okay, and then if you go to users, uh, you can see for user registration, you can you can choose uh, to register users to require an email confirmation. You can say yes or no there. Uh, you can also go to if you go to login, you can enable multiple logins, you can enable session timeouts, you can unlock or lock user accounts here. Email templates, uh, we'll come back to email templates later on, but uh, this is where you basically define how your emails, when they, when they send out, for example, a confirmation email, or when the user wants to request password recovery, how will that email look? And you can type basically your own email for the users there, and then when they want to reset their password, they'll get that specific email. There's some security roles that you can go into. I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time on that. Then if you go to the data section there, this is basically where all your tables will be. Uh, remember, the free limit is only five tables, so it's easy to create a table online. You just type the table name and say create, and it creates the table. And then... After creating your table, you can go to the schema there and you can add new columns there for, for your, your, your table. So you can give your column a name, the type for that specific column, the default value if you want one, select some constraints, validators, whatever. So this is really easy to do. Uh, some tables that will automatically be generated. One is the users table, which we're currently at to see... Uh, the email of the guy, the name, the password, when was it created, updated. Also, one of them needs to be an identity, will be the unique value uh, that the user will use to log in, which will normally be the email. But this is just, just the data part, and we'll get into that in another video. Then if you go to files, this, this will be where you, if you save files online, where you actually can see them online. Then in messaging, basically push uh, notifications. You can, you can send out a message message uh, directly from here you can see which devices are currently registered uh, you can create some channels where you can send out messages to we'll get back to that on a later video if you go to geolocation uh, you can also use geolocation set up some uh, geofences or whatever you want to do there but uh, this is basically just geolocation there's some business logic that you can go and look at there's a marketplace where you can upgrade your uh, your limits and then there's code generation which is quite nice you will choose your category in this case i'm going to use android you can you can download a simple chat application where they've done something there for you registration login basic create retrieve java classes file manager geo browser so it's some sample projects that they've created for you that's working with backend lesson already set up uh, that you can just basically go and generate code for you. So that's basically the backendless website, and we'll get into uh, what every section actually does there a bit more in detail later on when we're looking at specifics um, regarding user management, data management, files, push, mash, push uh, notifications, and so forth. So I'm not going to get into it in this video, but this is basically the backendless website Make sure that you go and have a look at the backendless website, look at the documentation, support, and so forth. This is a really nice mobile backend as a service, and we will use this uh, backendless as a mobile backend as a service for the coming videos to see if we can create real-world applications.